Hello and welcome to the video. This is one that I'm particularly excited about because I get my hands on this thing here. This is the new Dolphin Pro that you've probably seen listed in lots of different places. Now, at first glance, you can see, look at this and go, well, it just looks like the old Dolphin. And the good news is it does, which I'm very excited about because as those of you that watch my channel a lot will know, the version one Dolphin, the OG, is my favorite plane wing. And it's the one that always comes to the field with me. It's like a faithful dog. It just performs beautifully every single time. So I'm pleased that they haven't wandered too far away. However, as soon as you put this by the side of the V1, you'll realize that every single one of the plastics and the molded pieces in here are completely different. None of the parts on here are interchangeable with the V1 and they've made quite a number of changes. So let me talk very quickly about those in the headline and then we'll get into a little bit more of the weeds. Uh, this video is more about just taking a look at this thing, then I'll set it up and then I'll do another follow up video where we'll actually maiden it and see how it flies. Obviously big news is that it's now 6S. Uh, the battery bay is even bigger this time with additional magnets and catches as well as a optional screw to hold everything in place but a huge battery bay and because it's 6s it also means that the esc and motor at the back have been tweaked as well so the motor kv is down to 1100 completely new body uh, the bays are even bigger than on the v1 um, i didn't think that was actually possible but you could definitely rent this out to a small family of four i don't think you're gonna have any problem getting all your electronics in here this by the way, is the uh, top version that comes with the new flight controller. This is a new flight controller as well. Uh, it has some additional features, like you can set it up wirelessly from the SpeedyB app, which is cool. New tails. These are much, much, much bigger than the V1, and they also have control surfaces in them. And this is going to fly a little bit differently from the Dolphin in the fact that these are not ailerons anymore, these are ailerons. The pieces at the back, as you'll see in the iNav config, we'll have a look at that in a sec, are actually now rudders and elevators. So it's a slightly more traditional plane. And I guess that's why they've moved these V-tails back a little bit, so that there's a little bit more authority. Uh, those control surfaces are a little bit further away from that sign of central gravity, center of lift. There is an increased thrust to weight setup, so it has increased a little bit. I'm gonna aim for about 1300, 1350. Uh, but again, they've kept the wonderful hand grips. I can hold this in one hand. Um, I wish all wing manufacturers did this. I ask everyone to do it because hand launching, um, particularly with things like iNav Auto Launch, is just a flawless way to do it. And to be able to hold the whole thing in one hand and have it where the central gravity is, is just, seems such an obvious one to me uh, and there's loads and loads of tweaks we have um, an led here at the bottom we have a new scoop for the new esc to keep it cool we have leds out the wings you also may have spotted there are wing fences as well and a brand new nose this nose um, is one of the versions this is the one that's designed around hd there's a whole tray that slides out, kept in places by a couple of screws that you can mount your HD system on. And that's almost certainly where I'm gonna stick some Walksnail kit on when I've made this video. So while I unbox this thing, let's get into the weeds a little bit. Let's talk about what the differences are from the OG Dolphin that I love so much. Slightly shorter wings this time. Uh, wingspan is 800 millimeters versus the 845 on the V1. The wing area though has increased a little bit. The wings are a little bit deeper and a little bit longer back to front. So they are 16.96 dm squared, and that's an increase over the 15.24 dm squared on the V1. The body is longer too. It's 862 millimeters versus 710, and it has additional optional canopies in the box. You'll see them in a moment where you have the standard battery canopy that we've just looked at, but also one designed around pan and tilt stuff too. Huge area for the flight controller, as I've already talked about, which is a holdover from the V1, but it's even bigger this time, but it has a dual layer design. So the ESC is in a trough below. So rather than just have one piece of balsa wood that everything is gonna be bolted or stuck onto, it means that they've made a lot more of the slightly different space at the back. So things are kept out of the way. 
There is the new air cooling vent on the underneath for the ESC, which is nice. And they've added those winged fences to the tips of the wings. Not sure exactly what they're going to do, but I guess we'll find out when we fly it. The new wings are advertised as having higher lift and lower drag, resulting in super low amp draws. They're claiming only a 3.8 amp draw at 60 kilometers an hour, which is about 37.2 miles an hour. So that's going to be your cruise speed, I guess. And there's a much more improved locating design for the rear of the wings. It uses the same little kind of stubby carbon fiber tube, but it also has a molded piece to make sure the wings flow seamlessly back into the body. LED lights, as I've just shown on the wing tips and on the belly, and we have control surfaces in the vertical stabilizers too. There's also a new wing release mechanism, which is plastic. So rather than you have to have thumb screws inside the body, which I didn't mind at all, actually, they worked incredibly well. Now when the wings slap home, there's a loud snicking noise as that plastic catch holds on, and we'll see how that holds up to abuse over time. But it means that takedown and put together is really quick because all the electronic connections are also made at the root of the wing as well. Different motor and prop. This is a 2807 1100 kV motor on this with an eight by four inch gem fan electric prop. Now on the original one that was really designed about 4S, so that was an 1800 kV with either a five or six inch prop on the OG version. Larger ESC, obviously this one is 6S capable straight out the box. So it's BLS 6S, 50 amp ESC. That's up from a 30 amp with a five volt, three amp BEC originally. It's got the improved flight controller, which is this Navi Deluxe, which will be able to be configured from the SpeedyB app. So in terms of building this thing, the longest thing is actually sticking a few bits on. You'll notice that the plastics weren't installed. Um, so I've installed the skids. They've been kind of setting up overnight. Good old Yoohoo Paw has put them in place. These are incredibly useful for protecting the bottom when you're landing and also to pop in the wing fences as well, which are here at the wing tips. Um, that is probably the longest thing that you're going to do. I have also, if I just press the catch here on this side and pull the wing off, uh, if I find it at the back, the wing just kind of wiggles off. Everything is quite tight at the moment because it's all brand new. But what you can see here is that I have also glued in the little stubby at the back here into the body just to stop it falling out. Apologies for all the squeaking noises, those of you that are annoyed with that. But in terms of putting the wing on, it's as simple as locating the pin and snap, it's home. The only real tricky thing that I found was actually lining up the servo pins that go into the servos in the V-tail into the three pins that are here at the back. That took a little bit of finagling. Uh, sorry to use these highly technical terms in this video. Uh, I will probably never take those V-tails out. Um, you probably can do, but uh, I'm quite happy to leave them in place because with the wings off, this will kind of fit in my car without any problems at all. There are some additional pieces that aren't in my box, even though I've got the super duper one. One is the quick release battery plate. I've shown that on the channel before. I'm not intending to use one of those. Um, I'm probably going to use a nice 6S lithium ion pack in this. Uh, this, as it sits, um, without the FPV equipment, without the battery, is about 880 grams. So it, it's feels reasonably sturdy, not super heavy. This seems a slightly denser foam. The walls seem a little thicker as well than the version one. Battery is about 400 grams. Give it another 30, 40 grams for receiver and FPV gear. Uh, so I'm probably gonna end up 1350, 1400 grams, which is well under the maximum. So hopefully this is gonna fly really nicely. In terms of the flight controller setup, had a quick look at that. It's shipped with iNav 7.1.2, which I'm very happy about, because that's what I have on my current flying fleet. I haven't gone up to iNav 8. There are RD Pilot versions for the flight controller available as well. And there are a number of interesting things that you can see from the setup in here. It looks like the setup's been done reasonably well. Obviously, I'm going to change the modes. Obviously, I'm going to change the OSD. By default, it's set for DJI, which I'm going to have to tweak around. But the most interesting thing for me is looking at the outputs and how those are organized. And it clearly shows that the control surfaces on the wings are aileron only now. And the elevator and rudder 
and now on those V-tails at the back, making it into a far more conventional airplane rather than a wing. So first impressions, very, very good. What do I like about this? Well, I like the fact that they have improved the wing connectors. They're really good. And I like the way that they're using the catches. Uh, these catches underneath are very Atomarsi penguiny. If you have a penguin, you'll have seen these before. Uh, they work incredibly well and they're also designed to come off so that if you did break them, hopefully that's going to be a replaceable part. Got my fingers crossed for that. A little bit of molded protection for things like the servos, CG marks are molded in, leading edge protection, all really nice stuff. I do like the new nose with the airflow for the HD stuff and the fact it's held in place by two screws. So you undo those two screws and their thumb screws, the whole thing will slide out and there's enough room around it to get airflow through. There's also some extra little bits of plastic slide into this slot and they can be used to mount your antennas as well. Really, really smart design uh, by Atom RC and I wish more manufacturers thought this hard about making sure it was easy to mount your FPV gear. The geometry of the servos from the factory, from what I've seen so far, look pretty spot on. When the servo horns are at 90 degrees, all the geometry is set up well. Uh, that bodes well. Hopefully that will continue as they continue mass production. But all of the servos look like they're going to be spot on. I'll center them when I do my iNav setup and it's all powered, but we'll see how all that goes. Um, I like the fact that it comes with the standard nose and also the options for the different canopies. Obviously, I'm going to put my FPV stuff in the nose and that means this canopy fits beautifully and is streamlined. But there is the other one if you want to put some kind of pan and tilt setup on here, as well as having a nose that's a little bit more traditional without all this fanciness. So if you just want a simple... Um, camera stuck out here and maybe cut in some kind of vents of your own you have that option too hopefully these noses are going to be sold as spares as well because this is where you tend to fly into stuff with i like the fact that they've kept the absolutely massive battery bay and the absolutely massive bay for the flight controller too getting my receiver and stuff in here is not going to present me any problems there are also two additional kind of pouches under here there is these little in dents, if you, know, if you wanted to put telemetry radios or something, there is space for that too, but you're not gonna to struggle to get all your electronics in here, even if you have some extra stuff, maybe doing things with Ardu Pilot and you want PITO sensors and things in here as well. Um, loads and loads of room for all that good stuff. So in summary, many people upgraded their Dolphin V1 to B6S. It was quite a common thing that people did. And in fact, the original Dolphin has been modified quite heavily. I know I did it with mine, so it suits what I want to do with it and how it flies. It looks like Atom RC have been watching what we've all been up to in the hobby and kind of put most of it into this new version of the V2. It's not going to fit in a backpack, which one of my friends, Andrew, is going to be very sad about because of that extra long body. But I love the fact that they have plussed pretty much everything on this pro version. They haven't just tweaked an existing design. They've kind of gone back to the drawing board and seem to appear to have taken everything that makes the Dolphin so fab and just built on that amazing platform. I really wasn't expecting it to be this different, I'll be honest. I thought it was just going to be tweaked and a few things, but the, the way it's laid out, you know, the whole body kind of acts like a wing, uh, the new wing geometry, the way it all goes together, the tweaks and changes, the way that they've made the hatches more secure is really, really good and applaud Atom RC for putting this much time and effort and thought into it because I can't think of anything at the moment that I wanted in the next Dolphin that they haven't already done. Calling it a Dolphin Pro, well, I think there's an argument you could say this is a Dolphin V2 rather than a Dolphin Pro because it is that different from the original version. So I'm going to build this out and put play with iNav over the next couple of days, stick walks in on the nose, configure it as I normally do, it'll be set for an auto launch setup. Uh, the prop at the back being eight by four is still gonna be fine for hand launching in my humble opinion. See my video about why I don't tend to worry about that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna be flying this on this uh, 6S battery. Again, when I put the 6S battery in here, there's absolutely shed loads of room. I have no problem getting central gravity with this 400 gram battery. It's sat about there 
in the nose. So you could probably get away with something that's a little bigger. Um, we'll see what the performance is like with lithium ion. Uh, if I need to, I will go to lipo. Depends how much punch it needs. Um, I'm sure lots of people will start messing around with this and increasing the pitch on the prop to get even faster flights, but we'll see how it flies um, in its default configuration. There's only one thing that I'm not raving about on this entire model, and that is the GPS that's hidden away in here. It's a BN220. It should have been some form of modern M10 GPS. I'm gonna see how it performs, but there is a very good chance I'm going to rip that one out and put an M10 GPS in its place. It's going to lock faster, get me more satellites, and it'll be more reliable in operation. I run M10 on pretty much all of my stuff now, and for the extra five quid or whatever it's going to cost them to put M10s in, AtomRC, if you're watching this, please, please, please put M10s in from here on in. The BM220 is not a great GPS, and it's kind of letting fantastic model down just for one very very small piece but apart from that that's my only criticism really uh, stay tuned i'll build this out we'll take it to the field and we'll give it a fly and we'll see if this one can pip my dolphin v1 to the post as my favorite plane to fly thank you for watching my video check out the playlist and adding painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content if you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.